You're listening to The Weekly Brew. Now joining us on The Weekly Brew podcast is Justice Winslow, a 6'7 forward for the Miami Heat, who just wrapped up his rookie season in the NBA. Now, Justice, we're back here at St. John's High School doing this interview after your basketball camp, and you've had a lot of great memories here. I mean, I look back and I see the 2013 National Gatorade Player of the Year, the 2014 McDonald's All-American Honors, 2015 National Championship at Duke, and just a year ago, the Heat selected you with the 10th overall pick in the NBA draft. And I guess when you come back to this gym, does it allow you to almost reflect on the last few years as a basketball player? Um, I mean, it's pretty nostalgic you know for me being back here um, I spent seven years here middle school and high school and so um, just the relationships the friendships but the memories you know especially on the court you know winning three out of four state championships and um, the one my freshman year was special um, my brother hit the buzzer beater and you know we all stormed the court and so um, it was great um, there's just so many memories here and to be having my own camp um, run by my family and friends uh, here at my high school um, really means a lot and so um, it's just a this is a great time for everyone the kids are having fun and so um, time has flown um, in the past two years I've been all over the country um, doing what I love most importantly and so um, I couldn't be more thankful is that almost surreal to know that just two years ago you were playing high school basketball in here and now two years later you're leading a camp for kids that look up to you <laughs> yeah I mean um, time really does fly and I'm just trying to make the most of this opportunity I have in this life um, and reach as many lives as possible. So um, every little thing goes a long way, whether it's just a high five or, or telling a kid good job. But um, just to be here, you know, two years ago, um, around this time, I was just graduating high school here. And so um, it, it's been a whirlwind, but I've enjoyed, you know, every second of it. So how much do you keep up with the uh, the high school ball that's still going on here? Obviously, you were a big part of the Houston basketball community. There's a lot of talent here. Darren Fox is a guy that I covered and looked at a lot. I mean, how in touch with you are what's going on in the, in the uh, high school basketball realm still? Um, well, in college, I was probably more aware of it. Um, this past season, I was just so locked in on the NBA. But, um, you know, some of the guys that are just a little bit younger than me, I still keep in contact with. Uh, I played with De'Aaron Fox, you know, he's headed to Kentucky. We played at AAU together for a year, and so um, just watching him grow has been special. Um, and just to think one more year from now, you know, we could be playing against each other or playing with me, you know, in the NBA. And so um, there's a lot of great young talent, you know, in the city, of course, but um, it'll forever always be a football state. Speaking of young talent, there's a lot of great kids out here today, and it's an invitational camp. So how were the kids selected to be a part of your camp? Um, well, during the registration, you know, process, you know, we made it a priority that the kids write an essay um, describing if they could change one thing in the world, you know, for a day, what would they change? And the kids just, you know, you just see their heart and how pure it was just with their answers about, you know, helping the homeless or, or um, curing cancer, um, things of that nature. And so, um, you know, it was just a fun way, um, but it really just got to see um, the kids' heart, you know, how they want to help the world, how they want to impact the world even if it's just for a day. So uh, I think that was a cool way that allowed us to, you know, pick the kids um, to come to the to camp this weekend. It's a really terrific way to make a selection. What, what if you had to answer that question yourself? What's the one thing that you're trying to impact or change most in the world? Um, well, um, unfortunately for me, I've known people um, victim of cancer. And so um, if I could cure it in one day um, and, and save save all those lives, I would. Um, my grandmother and her her sisters all you know died of breast cancer so that's something that's close to my heart um, that's something that I would do um, I think that would you know greatly affect you know our human population and so um, you know finding a cure for that is something that you know I will put my effort towards as I you know get older and as my career goes goes further and um, that's something that's just close to my heart. Speaking of your career you just wrapped up uh, you know your first round in the NBA playoffs I mean you had 13 games didn't go the way you wanted I mean you guys lost in seven games to Toronto but what was it like to be a rookie and to be able to gain that experience in the postseason playing along guys like alongside guys like Dwayne Wade how much does that help you moving forward into your sophomore season? Yeah I mean uh, a lot of people around the league um, former players um, coaches you know everyone told me that you know um, I had a very special season for a rookie just because of my role and um, you know how far we went in the playoffs but for me it was all I know you know that's all I know of the NBA and so the fact that I was able to have a have a pretty big role and um, start playoff games you know for, for my team I think that's going to help me um, down the line just that experience you know most high draft picks go to you know sub 500 teams or teams that are rebuilding so for me fortunately enough um, end up falling to 10 but it really was a blessing in disguise um, and and now I'm 
you know, on a winning team and winning culture. And uh, I've got so much more experience than probably 95% of, of other rookies. And so I think that'll help me um, understand the importance of every detail, understand the importance of taking care of your body or game planning or um, knowing guys' tendencies in, in the playoffs. And so I feel like I kind of got an upper hand um, on other guys as far as experience. I don't want to generalize rookies in the NBA, but it seems that when you are a one-and-done player in college that it's mostly because of your offensive ability. And I think that that kind of carries over to the NBA, whereas for you, it's it's almost a little bit different. Eric Spolstra trusted you so much with your defensive ability that he put you up against LeBron James and James Harden. What does that say for you in, in, in terms of emphasizing uh, a strong defense and to be able to play and defend stars of the game like that? Um, I think it speaks to um, my ability to mentally process things. Um, just from a young age, I was always playing up against older guys, and so uh, my body wasn't quite there yet, um, but mentally I had to be able to pick things up quicker to, to stay level with the, with the older guys. And so um, I think that's something that, um, you know, through college, um, Coach K really helped me um, process things faster, understand game plans, and. Um, you know, we made it to a national championship, won a national championship, so we understood what it took to win. And so I think that was the biggest thing once I got to Miami is find ways to make winning plays and, you know, you'll find a way to be on the court. And I think um, my coaching staff saw that, you know, in summer league and in early practices. And, um, you know, I found a way to just, you know, a lot of times just being out there in the game in the fourth quarters, tight games. And um, just defensively, um, you know, that's probably one of the hardest parts about the league. You know, offense is easy, everyone wants to play it, but defensively you really got to think, you got to communicate, call up picks, talk, um, understand coverages, understand people's tendencies, whereas offense it's more instinctual, you know, kind of playing off each other. But defense um, is a little bit more of a stress mentally, and I think um, that's something that I've been you know, very good at so far in my career. You've played against some of the best offensive players in the league. Obviously, you're the guy that is assigned to take them there. I wonder who do you really get up for? Who's the guy that you know is going to be a challenge that you really look forward to defending and shutting down? Um, well, I grew up a, a huge Rockets fan, so playing against James Harden was, um, you know, something I was really looking forward to, um, and that was a lot of fun. But just the, the top guys, all the top guys, um, Kevin Durant, Paul George, LeBron, um, guys that, you know, went to Duke, played at Duke. Um, but I just get excited. I love the opportunity. I embrace the challenge. And so um, when I see those really, you know, those elite players, you know, names come up on the schedule, um, you know, you get, you get really anxious, you get excited. But the biggest thing in those situations for me is just to settle in, you know, don't make it, you know, too big of a deal. You know, they're still basketball players. They're still human. Um, they got a, real, a good amount of, you know, rare human ability. Um, but uh, just, just settle in and, and treat them just like any other player. Um, but just remember, you know, they're going to make tough shots um, and stay you know, level-headed throughout. Now that you're done with your first invitational clinic, can you talk about the highlights? Uh, what memories did you have with the kids? Um, probably the best memory was, you know, the defense drill. You know, we uh, were all slapping the floor, screaming. Um, I love defense and um, we all really enjoyed that one, diving on the floor, that sort of thing. But just seeing the kids' energy, you know, um, I don't think they were prepared to, to work this hard, but once they saw my involvement and, and the coaches, you know, being great at each station, they really got into it um, and they've been working hard, having fun. So I think those are the biggest two things, just seeing them have fun you know, smiling, but, you know, working hard all at the same time. Back to the NBA, there's a lot of parity in the league. Uh, the Heat would actually be the only team, I think, in the last seven years to win multiple championships. So just organizationally, structurally, uh, what's it like being a part of that Miami Heat organization, and how do they rank, in your opinion, in terms of, you know, the organizations that are really getting it done, and what is it they're able to do effectively? Um, well, I think it's, a, it's a, a culture that they build over years. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. Um, you're seeing organizations across the league um, really start, start to build that. Um, you have organizations like the Lakers, the Spurs, the Celtics, you know, those winning cultures. And over the past 15 or so years, you have the Heat. And you kind of see it, honestly, with, with um, Golden State and the people they're bringing in as far as coaching staff, uh, players, you know, trainers, all those type of things. It's really becoming a, a first class, you know, organization. I'm not just saying that because they're winning. But, um, you know, I think it's just everyone buying in, buying into the culture, buying into winning, um, sacrificing. But, um, as far as winning cultures or winning organizations, you know, I, I would say the Spurs, Celtics, Lakers are, are always, you know, at that top level. You know, in football, you got, you know, really the Patriots um, as of late. Um, 
you know, San Francisco Giants, um, Red Sox. They all they have that, that winning culture, that, that history. And so I think um, when you have that, that history, people want to be a part of that. Uh, they see the spotlight and they see the fame and, and the history that can be made and, and people just want to be a part of that. So I think that's kind of what helps those those cultures continue to grow. Again, we're at St. John's High School here with Justice Winslow for his Inv- Invitational Clinic. And uh, Justice, uh, you just finished up your rookie year again. You've said you know that you want to be the face of the franchise eventually. Once you're done with this Invitational Clinic, what does the rest of the summer look like as you prepare for the 2016-2017 season? Um, well, um, next week it, it starts um, preparing for summer league and um, that pretty much goes through July, um, finish with some um, Team USA select team stuff um, at the end of July. But, you know, after that, take some time off, um, probably come back to Houston um, and enjoy some time with my family. But at the same time, continue to work, continue to get in shape and, um, you know, continue to try to prepare to, to take on a bigger role, take on you know, more um, muscle um, and, and um, prepare for, the, for my second season. You know, I'm prepared to take a, a huge leap. Um, next year as far as my role and my effectiveness on the court. And so um, I'm extremely excited about it. You've been listening to The Weekly Brew.